You look fine. Your hair's fine. <laughs> so is yours. Thank you. Right. I'm parting it on the other side these days. Oh yeah. Well, I was looking at my picture in the on the and filling up my hair, so he was telling me my hair is fine. Yeah. <laughs> Dan's on now. Daniel. Good morning, all. Hi, Dan. Good morning. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning. You want a towel behind you? No, but one. Good morning. Hi, John. Good morning. <laughs> well, you got ants in your pants. I can't get comfortable. <laughs> She's been doing her physical therapy exercises this morning. They How hurt. is that going? I don't like them much. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. It's kind of been my opinion of exercise since junior high school. <laughs> Don't like it much. Well, they put her through the paces on Friday, so. I have my orders. She has her orders, yes. <laughs> Is it helping? Yes. It helps. <laughs> That's a, like a lot of things. <laughs> Sylvia. Good morning. Good morning, Tom. A uh, long time no see. Oh, yeah. Tom and I were on the uh, Earlham Trustees board meetings this last week by Zoom oh. over four days. Four days. We are, uh, I'm suffering from Zoom fatigue, I can tell you that. <laughs> morning, John Barry. Welcome. Good morning, thank you. Or, good morning, thank you, sorry. <laughs> make sure it actually unmuted me before I started talking. It did. You're good. Hi, Diana. Hi. How are you? Are you at your home? I am. I was trying to shut the curtain. It's so bright. It's a beautiful morning. Good morning, Norma. Hi. Good morning. <clears throat> well, as we were gathering, getting ready, we had uh, hymns for the Malton, Mountain Dulcimer. Uh, on this CD by Matilda Navius, who is Marilyn Bell's daughter-in-law. Oh. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, it's pretty. Morning, Dave.
Well, uh, good welcome, good. welcome everyone. Say good morning, Dave. Hmm. Um, are there things to share, concerns, or prayers before we get started? Yeah, we certainly need to continue in prayers for our country and. I, I think we need to keep Ken Allman and the boys and their families in our prayers with Donna's passing. Okay. Well, as I mentioned, we were happy to get back in, to get Nancy back in therapy this week since she wasn't able to to go to therapy since she got out of the hospital almost two months ago, so three months ago. So we're going down to St. Franciscan in Mooresville, so that's nice and handy. That's good. Well, we'll uh, enter silence now and um, Dan is the worship leader, so when he feels led, he'll speak out of the silence, um, invite everybody to um, mute your mics uh, because of feedback, um, and uh, if you feel led to speak, simply unmute. So. Welcome to the June. The first etymology of the month's name is that it was named after the Roman goddess Juno, the goddess of marriage, and the wife of the supreme deity Jupiter. It's one of the two months of the year that have no other months that would start on the same day of the week in the calendar year. So if June started on Monday, there are no other months in 2020 that start on Monday. I found that little bit of trivia interesting. <laughs> Besides the first etymology of the month's name, there are four or five other suppositions, but none of them had to do anything with gardening. I have a garden patch that I have planted and toiled in since soon after moving to this property in 1988. The sod was first turned by the neighbor with his late 1920s McCormick with a two bottom trip plow. That plow now sits as an ornament in the front yard of the house across the way. Every time I pass it, I can recall the sound and the sight of the man and his tractor and the plow breaking of my garden. What was once his property is now in the care of his granddaughter and her family. The delightful sounds of kids at play drifts across the pasture. Spring has been late. The tilling to be done in my time available to do it was out of sync with the rain. What would have been done in mid to late April was now getting done in late May. What I can see should still have adequate time to mature before frost. I have a few eaters here, so my garden is getting smaller. 
I'm transitioning to more perennials and less annuals. Nonetheless, this spring I went to Cox's plant farm to get tomato plants and seeds for beans and corn, reddish melons, both water and musk melons and okra. Each year I try to grow something different. It has ranged from black eyed peas to peanuts to Armenian cucumbers. This year it's salsify. Haven't planted it before, don't know what it tastes like. It looks like hairy white carrots. I'll let you know. I buy fresh seeds every year. The smallest packet I can buy is usually too many for what I need. I've treated this condition in two ways. I plant too many in the row. I wait for the plants to get the survival size and then I thin to the optimum spacing. Somehow it feels oddly traitorous about planting a seed to mature and reproduce food and then cutting its life short. The other method is to fold up the top of the packet of unused seeds and toss it in the tub with my other seed orphans. I was rifling through the tub and found seed packs that were prepared for as early as the 2013 season. It came to me while I was standing there looking at the tub that there was a lot of potential good in those seeds that would never be fulfilled because I had not put them or allowed them to be put in a suitable growing environment. They had not gotten wet in the dark. They had not sprouted in nutritious humus. They had not sent their first leaves toward the sun because I had not let them. I had stifled their potential by neglect. And then I got a nudge and the nudge was, what else are you stifling by neglect? My view of souls and their operation is that every interaction between persons who have souls and we all do, is an opportunity for planting seeds in other souls. How would I do this, you ask? I could hold a feeble hand and plant the seed of empathy. I could offer a smile and say hello and plant seeds of recognition and value. I could ask and listen and sow a seed of concern. I could say, may I help and plant a seed of care. I could say thank you and plant a seed of appreciation. And there are so many other soul seeds I could plant. Am I neglecting my Christian duty to love one another by neglecting to plant good soul seeds whenever I could and should? Now there are bad seeds too the equivalent of, say, thistles and other noxious weeds, hateful and ignorant words, social neglect, untruths, unkind actions, and there are many more. I could say and do these things, but I pray to my Holy Spirits to help me not to. From Luke 8, the parable of the sower. And when a great crowd came together and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trodden underfoot and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock and as it grew up, it withered because it had no moisture. And some fell among the thorns and the thorns grew with it and choked it, and some fell in good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see and hearing, 
they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes the word away from their heart that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those when they hear the word, receive it joy, but these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of temptation, they fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those that hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. And as for that in good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bring forth fruit with patience. For me, I need to change my I could to I can and I do when planting soul seeds. I need to apply my garden planting method of sowing many more seeds knowing that they may fall upon some souls with unfertile conditions.
As I'm uh, sitting here looking out the window, I see all the cottonwood seeds blowing across. They were blowing across, of course, while I was staining my deck yesterday. So I added new texture to it. So I thought of uh, Dan's good seeds that we need to sow, but I also was thinking of the seeds I don't want sown in the soil of, of my life. And how do I uh, avoid those taking root? Um, especially with all the noise on uh, media of all sorts with competing voices and uh, um, sources, the anger uh, of not a righteous kind, um, the hateful words uh, that get my dander up, I admit. How do I... Uh, and I realized I have to stop placing myself in some of those places, um, which may mean uh, blocking certain words or names or even people, um, just so I don't let anything fall into uh, ground that might be more fertile than I realized. So, how do we plant the good seeds and avoid uh, being receptive ground for those that are harmful? As Dan was talking, I, I kept thinking, for me, um, how do I prepare the soil? I have four young adult grandchildren and four teenage grandchildren. And just going in and planting the seed doesn't always work very well. They're not, they don't want to hear it or they're not ready to hear it. And I just kept, what kept coming to me, my prayer to God was helping me know how to prepare the soil so that the seed can take it and take it well. When I first started teaching in the 1970s, I was at a, one of the large schools in the Indianapolis County School, County Schools, not the inner city. And every morning the principal would start with some quotation from some piece of literature, and then he would have a moment of silence. And some of those quotes came from the Bible. 
Now this is during the era of Madeline O'Hara and all of the no prayer or anything in school stuff. So I went to him and I said, how are we getting away with that? And his comment was, until the, the country, the go governor or the president comes to this particular school and says to me, you cannot do that. We will continue to do that because it calms the kids for the day. Now this is junior high. Fast forward to the 90s, the late 90s, and I said something to one of the pastors in the, in the Monrovia area about what he had done, and suddenly we began to have moments of silence at the beginning of our day at, at the schools in Monrovia. I don't know if that had anything to do with what I said to him or not. Then years later, the youth pastor at that church came to me and said, Betty, the community trusts you. Now, I'm teaching at that point some evolution, very minor because it's junior high, the Big Bang Theory, and those kinds of things. And I've gotten my share of tracks from different religions about that. And he says, but the community trusts you. We know that you won't lead these kids astray on this. So my thoughts on that through all these years, you never really know where those seeds are going to fall and what they're going to do. A corn plant growing in a cornfield is part of a valuable crop. That same corn plant growing in a soybean field is a weed. So as we tend our personal gardens, it is imperative that we use God-given judgment to decide what actions, what words are valuable crops, and maybe the same thing is a weed. And as we listen to the media, the many, many things that we hear, it's imperative that we decide what's valuable and what's not. As we tend the gardens of our lives, it is important that we help others develop the skills to decide what's valuable 
and what's a weed that needs to be plucked out and thrown aside. This morning, I'm asking for judgment and help and guidance in deciding what's valuable and what's a weed that needs to be plucked out and thrown aside. We are given so many opinions, so many facts, so many alternative facts that we all need guidance in deciding how to tend our garden. Well, thank you all for joining. Um, might we uh, close by just going around and introducing ourselves and what meeting or uh, whatever uh, we're affiliated with church uh, so folks know where we're from. We're Brent and Nancy from West Newton. Dan Berger, I'm also from West Newton. Sylvia Graves from West Newton. I am Norma Gaston uh, from West Newton and kind of Valley Mills. I help out there when we meet face to face as well. I'm Frank Young from Spoon River Meeting in Illinois, currently living in Terre Haute. John and Betty Heschelman from Mooresville Friends. Dinah Geiger from Fairfield Friends. Tom Roberts, membership at Noblesville. Sue Agin, West Newton Friends. David Mills, West, West Newton Friends. Sylvia Graves, best looking brother. Pearson, <laughs> <laughs> West Newton. Sorry. My name is John Barron. I still like to say I'm part of Wanna Chapel French Church, but it's been gone for many, many years. Uh, Steve Mills, West Newton. <laughs> Again, thank you all, and um, hopefully we will see you next week. Um, blessings on you. Bye.